Hey there, super fan. Boy, have I got a treat for you. You know those animated shorts that Cartoon Network airs as part of its DC Nation block? Like Plastic Man or Super Best Friends? Well, I've got a new favorite. Sorry, Lauren. It's Amethyst Princess of Gemworld. Now what the hell is that? Amethyst Princess of Gemworld was a comic published by DC in the 1980s. I imagine any resemblance to She-Ra, Princess of Power, is purely intentional. You got that right, pal. Amethyst had a handful of appearances in the DC Universe, and now a series of animated shorts on Cartoon Network. Now let me give you my six reasons why Amethyst Princess of Gemworld is awesome. Number six, likability. Because the entire collection of shorts is less than 10 minutes long, don't expect any major character development. But the show gets around that trouble spot by populating its world with some instantly recognizable stock types. Amethyst, aka Amy Wilson of Earth, is a social phobic nerdette. Supporting character and winner of the Simon Belmont lookalike competition Prince Topaz is an incompetent goofball. And Heavy Dark Opal probably graduated from Sauron School for the Dark Arts with about a C average. This could have made the whole team majorly irritating, but they're played so sincerely you can't help but love the whole ball of cliches. Number five, Amethyst is fresh. I fancy I'm fairly familiar with the major players in the DCU, but I've never even heard of Amethyst. So it's awesome to see a new face among the staples of the DCAU. Also, Gemworld is a very different setting from most of the DC-related stuff. I like the idea of a magical world of fantasy hiding somewhere between Metropolis and Jump City. Amethyst herself is a different sort of hero from most of DC's cape and costume crowd, most of whom are these natural-born day savers. But Amy's got more in common with the folks over in the Marvel Universe. She's an ordinary girl with ordinary problems. Like being trapped in a video game world? Hey, it happens to Captain N all the time. Number four, Amethyst is funny. You can tell the folks who made the show have a good sense of humor, starting with how Amy's playing straight gal to the wacky world around her. Her alicorn mount is a fun comic foil with a laugh just like Muttley from Wacky Racers. Prince Topaz is a lovable schmuck, and some of the situations that Amethyst and friends find themselves in are hilarious. Number three, Amethyst is very pretty. The art style is definitely anime-influenced. Everything from the character design to Amy's magical girl transformation sequence screams Japanimation. The show is also bright and colorful, plus the action scenes are well animated. Number two, the references. Because in this incarnation of Amethyst, Gemworld is in a video game somehow, you'll see references to World of Warcraft, Amethyst fights a slime from Dragon Warrior, and then that mother <laughs> from Centipede. And of course, they say the immortal line from Legend of Zelda. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Oh, and if you look closely, you'll see a She-Ra poster in Amy's room. And number one, Amethyst, Princess of Gemworld, is pretty darn clever. The original comic was more or less just a standard sword and sorcery epic, but changing Gemworld into a classic video game-inspired wonderland was a great idea, opening up the door to all those references I just mentioned, and also a good way to get an ordinary teen girl in on the whole magical superhero thing. I only wish the show would have been longer. It just needed more time to explore the great ideas and humor at play here. But for what it is, Amethyst, Princess of Gemworld is awesome, and totally worth watching. Hell, it's less than 10 minutes long, and it's right here on YouTube. The link's down in the description. Thanks for watching, I'm The Stupid Private. Hey kids, today's show is brought to you by the letter 4 and the number potato! I'm a stupid private.